Hello, and welcome to AHAVTS.com Clipcast on setting up an ASA and ASDM in GNS3. My name is Aleem HLE. And oh, by the way, I'm this handsome gentleman to the right. Now, setting up an ASA in GNS3 can be a little tricky and nerve wracking for a lot of people, including myself. So I decided to put a Clipcast together to assist others in setting up an ASA within the GNS3 environment. And before I begin, I want to stress that this clipcast is relevant only to the Windows platform. So, in this clipcast, we're going to talk about some prerequisites that are needed before we can set up our ASA. Then, we're going to actually set up the ASA within the Genus 3 environment. And last, we're going to access the ASA using ASDM. So, let's get started. There are a few prerequisites that are needed before we can set up our ASA. The first one is go to this website and download the ASA iOS image. This archive will contain the two files necessary to setting up our ASA. The iOS image used is the ASA 802-k8.bin. And once you download this file and extract it to your local machine, these are the two files we're going to use. It is the ASA 802-k8.initrd.gz and the kernel. The second item is to download and obtain a valid ASDM binary file. The one used in this clipcast is the ASDM 645-204.bin. And the third item is to download a TFTP server. Now the one used in this clipcast and the one I prefer is made by SolarWinds. And let me briefly show you what that one looks like. Here is the TFTP server that we're going to use when we're setting up the ASDM. So we have our iOS, we have our ASDM image, and we have a TFTP server. Let's go ahead and set up the ASA. So we've downloaded the necessary tools to configure the ASA. So let's go ahead and configure an ASA in GNS3. The first thing I'll do is call up GNS3. Then I'll click on the Edit, Preferences, click on KMU, and follow to the ASA tab. I will identify the ASA as AHA-ASA. I will up the RAM to about 512. Next, the uh, number of NIC cards, we'll keep it as 6. The NIC model, you can use the default, but I normally use the I82559ER card. And you remember the two other files that we downloaded previously? Well, here's where they apply. The first one would be the .gz file, like this. And the next would be the kernel file. Okay. And I'll save these configurations. And now I'm going to drop my ASA onto my workspace. I am also going to include an ether switch and a cloud so we can configure the ASDM after we're finished with the ASA. So I can configure the cloud as such. Bring this here. Okay, I will um, use my loopback address on my local machine. Add. Okay, now for my connections. I'm going to use the Ethernet 0 of the ASA as my inside interface, connected to my switch on port 1. And for my switch, port 8, to my loopback address. So, now we're ready to turn on the ASA. Alright. Now, currently, right now, the ASA is going to run through some diagnostics in order to set up. So, we're going to wait a few seconds here. But there is some important information that we need to be made aware of before we can continue. And we'll just wait, and I'll show it to you. All right, here we go. The first important note is this. This is your first boot. Please wait about a minute and then type in the following command. We need to type these commands in in order to complete the booting process for the ASA. The next one is, please note to use the following command under ASA to save your configurations. So anytime you want to save your configurations, you have to use this command. And you may have also seen a window showing the Linux kernel. We need to keep this window open. If you decide to close this window, you must shut down, turn off the ASA, and turn it back on again. 
this window must be kept open. So I'm going to minimize it. Okay, a minute has passed or so, so let's go ahead and complete the ASA booting process. Type in CD, mount disk 0, followed by disk 0, slash, Okay, so take another few seconds here until the ASA boot up until we get our prompt. So we have completed our installation of our ASA in GNS3. But I'm not going to end there. I'm going to do some basic configurations on this ASA. Um, two of the things that we're going to do is configure the inside interface and the outside interface as well as set up this ASA for HTTP access from a remote host. Okay, the first thing I'll do is go into enable mode. Since we boot up this ASA for the first time, there's no password, so I can just hit enter. I will go into config T. Followed by the interface, which is E0 slash 0 that we have identified as our inside interface connecting to the switch. Enter IP address of 10.0.0.1 followed by a 24-bit subnet mask. We're going to name this interface inside and by default the inside interface will have a security level of 100. Then I'll do a no shut to turn on that interface. Now the next interface we'll configure is the outside interface and I'm going to use Ethernet 0 slash 5. So interface E0 slash 5 followed by the IP address and I'll use 170.100.100.1 followed by a 24-bit subnet mask. I'm going to name this interface outside and by default the outside interface has a security level of zero. So I'm going to do a no shut. And we have just successfully configured our inside and our outside interfaces. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up this ASA to accept HTTP connections from an external host in order to download the ASDM. The first thing I'll do is type in HTTP server enable, followed by HTTP and the host that is going to connect to the ASA, 10.0.0.2, followed by 255.255. 255 to 255 for that single host, followed by inside. And now this ASA is ready to accept an HTTP session from its remote host. But first, I am going to save these configurations here. Okay. And before downloading the ASA, I want to create a username. So let me do username ha-vts. Well, underscore VTS. Password is Cisco. Followed by privilege level 15. Save this one more time. Okay. And we're good to go. So let's go ahead and download the ASDM onto this ASA. All right. I will first start up my TFTP server. And we'll click start. Okay, it started. I'm not going to minimize that. And I'll type in the following command. Copy TFTP to flash and enter. The remote host is 10.0.0.0.2 followed by the file name which is ASDM-645-204.bin same destination file and here we are downloading the ASDM. This is going to take a few seconds, or probably about a minute and a half or so, so I'm going to pause the recording until this is finished downloading onto the ASA. Okay, the ASDM image has finished downloading onto the ASA. Even though it said about 76 seconds, it felt more like three minutes. So let's check the flash to see if our file is there. Whoops. Sorry about that. Show flash. All right. As you can see at the bottom, it does show the ASDM image on this ASA. And I will save these configurations. Okay. And the last thing before we uh, access it via the web, let me just do a ping to my remote host. So 
and that works and you know what I'll do one from our remote host to the ASA so I will issue a ping to my 10.0.0.1 all right, so we can ping it from the remote host and that's good. So now let's open up a web browser. Okay, let me open up Internet Explorer here. And I will uh, go to HTTPS 10.0.0.1 and click continue. And here we are in the ASDM 6.4 release 5. The next thing you want to do is install the ASDM launcher and run the ASDM. Now, I'm not going to click on this since I have previously downloaded it. So I'll just show you from there. All right. So I'll start up the launcher. Um, that username is incorrect. It's underscore VTS followed by Cisco. And let's see if we'll get in. Let's click yes. And yes, it's caching the software and the ASDM should launch in a few seconds. And here is the ASDM main page. We have the device dashboard, the firewall dashboard. We can see our host name is Cisco ASA, the ASA version, the ASDM version, the firewall mode is routed, our total flash, and our total memory. Now most of the time if you're using the GUI interface, you probably want to go to configurations and set up the ASA via the startup wizard. And let me quickly run through the 10 steps of the startup wizard. The first step is you want to choose your starting point if you want to modify existing configurations or reset it to the factory default. The next step is choose a host name for your ASA, domain name, and privilege mode password. Next you may want to configure the outside interface of the ASA as well as setting up a DHCP server or point-to-point -point over Ethernet if you're using the ISP. Next you may want to configure other interfaces of the ASA. Next, you may specify some static routes on your ASA. Then you may want to configure a DHCP server. Uh, also, probably may want to do NAT or PAT translations, followed by administrative access to the ASA. And you may want to set up this ASA to be remotely managed by an update server. And last, a summary of all of the configurations that have been added by this wizard. So that was some good stuff, huh? So let's recap. Well, in this clipcast, we talked about some prerequisites that were needed in order to set up the ASA in GNS3. Then we actually open up GNS3 and set up the ASA. And in doing so, we also downloaded the ASDM image and accessed the ASA via the ASDM launcher. Well, I hope you enjoyed this clipcast on setting up an ASA and ASDM in GNS3. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.